This is a Cope's gray tree frog. It's one of many species in the United States that are common to the East Coast all the way through past the Mississippi River and into the Mid-South. Let's make something cool today. So just a little bit of background on the Cope's gray tree frog. It is also called the southern gray tree frog and it's found in the United States. It's almost completely indistinguishable from the gray tree frog, um, which is it's like a distant cousin, but it shares much of the geographical area with it. So both species are variable in color. They're a mottled gray. Uh, the, the copes has got just a little bit, and you can see in this picture, it's got just a little bit of purple. It's got some browns in it, just a little bit of light green, and they resemble tree bark, which is what they're supposed to do. Um, they're woodland habitat, but they will go to open areas to find their breeding ponds. So they are in the water, which makes it a viable species for bass and other forage fish that are looking for stuff along the edges. And the really only noticeable difference between the gray and the southern gray or the copes is the mating call. The copes has got a much faster paced mating call and a lot higher pitched than the other one, which is just the gray tree frog. So pretty cool. You can find it again all the way from uh, the East Coast and the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic all the way down to past the Mississippi. And in the southeastern United States, Cope's gray frogs, um, they will call and breed from May to August. So now is the perfect time of year to make one. And we're going to be making it today on this which is a rebel frog. So it was just the regular green. The rebel has a few different colors, just like they do with their grasshoppers and their craws. Their frog is pretty cool, swims really well, does not come with a split ring on the nose when you take it out of the package. It doesn't matter what color it was, we have given it a white primer and we are ready to rock and roll. Now, one of the things on this that I'm going to be doing is something that I have been doing for the last week or so, which I've, I've had a couple of orders that have requested and required a lot of hand detailing. And those are a little bit more tedious, a little bit tougher to get through, but the outcome is generally really, really cool and it adds a much more natural appearance to the frog. And we've got this white primer on. It's a little bit pitted on the top and just a couple on the side. I'm actually okay with the pits in the sides and on the top because that gives it a more natural appearance. And there are lots of pits and bumps all, all along this Cope's gray tree frog. There are really only a couple of key colors that we're gonna be worried about today. I'm gonna to add in a little bit of brown in some spots, and for the brown, we're gonna be using a detail burnt sienna. I've got a little bit of opaque lilac, but I wanna mix that just a shade darker. I'm gonna put in just a little bit of pearlized plum to that, which I think is gonna look pretty good. So I'm actually gonna add the drop of this in first. And we're gonna prep all of our colors and then spray from here instead of directly from the bottle. And I'm probably gonna reduce some of this just a little bit. And I've got three drops of pearl plum. And to that, I'm gonna add this opaque lilac. Now, you wanna make sure that all of the junk is out of the opening and you grab a little hook hanger or a, a bait hanger and most of the time that stuff will just pop right out of the area. Add this lilac in and then to that add one more thing. I'm going to add just a little bit of this. Just to jazz it up a little bit. Just about three drops. And we want it to kind of shoot light we don't want it to be super thick. Uh, we're going to be using really low pressure on quite a bit of this. And I'm adding just a little opaque pearl additive in there as well. Normally I'll mix it in the cup. Well, that's a color I'm pretty happy with. It does seem to be thin. Good with that. So the best thing that I can tell you uh, from mixing, because I get a lot of 
uh, pardon the pun, mixed comments on the mixing part of it. Um, play around with colors. Play around with stuff that that looks good to you and never be afraid to just grab some practice baits or some uh, plastic spoons and just goof around and see what see what different mixes are going to turn out like. I'm going to add just a little bit of reducer into this. Now this is a, another mix. It's a little bit darker than a mint color. This is basically a pearlized key lime and a transparent leaf green and white. And that's all this is. And I cannot tell you how many drops I used of each one, only because I wasn't counting when I mixed it. This was one of those kitchen mixes where you just add a dash of this and a dash of that in. So, but it's a cool color. So we have our purple and our greens ready to go. There's also this detail sienna. And it's just in a couple of random places. And then you'll notice that there's some almost like a camouflage type lining on this frog. And we're going to be hand detailing all of that in, which will be cool as well. So there's just a little bit of sand bone towards the back of this frog. So that's the first thing I'm going to put in. It's just a little bit of that. It's like two or three drops. And we're going to add that in. I'm also going to add just a little bit there along the cheek. Just a little bit along the nose and under the throat. Now, to that, I'm going to add in just a little bit of this green. Really don't need a whole lot of that. Bring my pressure way down. And as I'm looking at the picture, you guys are looking at the picture with me. There's some green. here oh the messages that's from Jim Smith um, he's got a really cool book knowing bass he's a Florida guy and we've corresponded quite a bit throughout the last couple of years and he's a as much of like the science type geek and fisherman as I am and he's got a really cool book. It's probably out of print. If it's got any kind of a higher price tag on it now, it's out of print. You notice that as I'm talking to you guys, I'm adding just a little bit of shading throughout the lining on here in the mouth area, right up and underneath the eyes on either side of the arm here. This, the cool thing about these Rebels is they come with that one little arm and we're gonna do some cool stuff with that as well. Um, just a little bit over top. But he is, um, he just moved recently, or I would say within the last six months to a year he moved. And uh, we were talking about a, a book that's kind of heavy on the science aspects of how bass see color. And that's important to me, and it's important to a lot of lure makers because of colors, um, patterns. And we were talking that, you know, basically when it comes down to it, bass can't really see red at all. Um, so what makes red such a popular color? Does it does it go into it like it, they kind of see it as a shade of gray? So we we're just talking about what makes red a spectacular color different times of the year if they can't really see it. So there's a lot more to that and we'll get in depth with that in another conversation. But I've got my green in here now and then I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of this purple. And again, we're just kind of randomizing where we're putting it, but I'm following along where you can see it here. And it's definitely in the legs. It's in a couple of spots. And this is all low pressure, as you can see. Just adding a couple of dots of this purple. And then as we go through, do that one over, do this one over. 
as we go through will be a little more detailed with where we're putting all of these um, all these lines and you'll see what I mean as we get a little bit more into this pattern. I have just a little bit of burnt sienna in here running about 10 on our pressure and I'm going to get in let's see here right on the arm one little area there same area and I'm trying to mimic the, um, the placement of the brown on each side come from right behind the eye and go into that little ear skin area there we go just a little bit under the chin a little on the belly Maybe just a little bit over the eye here and do it on both sides there. Now we are going to darken the eye in and then we're going to add the detailing on top of the black eye. All of this is a real light trigger touch. All right. I'm going to heat set this and we'll come right back in. While I was off camera, I was kind of practicing how thin we can get these lines. And if you guys come in with me here, we can get lines with an airbrush incredibly thin. Real, real thin but I'm not that good <laughs> to be honest I'm really good with the detailing brush and I'm really good with a detailing acrylic pen so that's where I shine that's normally where I'm gonna go with it all that said if you have a incredibly steady hand and you think now it's nothing that I can't correct and you think that you can get real close in here and I hit it on the mark the first time and I'm only going to do this on both sides of here because we're going to redo that if you guys can do that then I encourage you to try and detail these little camo lines there's little lines on here with an airbrush unfortunately that is not my forte but I can hand detail with pen and pens have very very thin tips as do some of the double O and triple O artist round brushes out there now before we go crazy with the detailing pens I'm gonna bring in this little creature feature and with a, some opaque white it's fairly thick and then you can see the darker lines in here so I'm just gonna add a little bit of modeling To a couple of those areas just to kind of build a little bit of a natural pattern I'm going to do the same thing along those black lines we just laid down Add in a few more throughout where the coloring is on this bait. And 
and this is really going to help build that natural appearance as we go. Now if you can see this pattern, you can see that there are just a couple little black splotches throughout in various spots. The key is isolating one area and just laying down a tiny bit. Don't want to overdo the black on this, at least with an airbrush. tomorrow. Welcome back for round two. It's the next day. So, we have gotten our first layer of clear coat on. And now, what we're going to do is continue on our detailing. I think the basic lines that I want are in. Still not sure if I'm 100% happy with this lure, but we are continuing. So what I have here, I've got three different whites. I've got a metallic white from Spectratex, the pearlized, which is sort of the same, but not really, and then a very thin illustration base. We want it to be transparent because we don't want to overkill and completely block out what we've done underneath. But we need to add in some grays and some darker purples and some greens to finish this bait off and then maybe just a little bit more detailing and try and make it look a little bit more natural. I'm happy with the eyes as best I can be. It is the first time that I've attempted to do a 100% hand, hand painted, which you guys saw me do yesterday, um, on this eye and then shoot a little bit of pearl gold and red through it to mimic how it looked in the, in the picture. So without further ado, got some medium base gray and some really soupy watery illustration white which I'm just gonna kind of swirl together to that I'm gonna add just a little bit of this metallic Spectratex and we'll mix up the medicine It should be real light and soupy, just like that. Definitely going to need some new paper towels after we're done here. And the airbrush is sitting right around 20 PSI. So I'm just going to give this whole thing, for the most part, a very light dusting of this soupy light gray transparent kind of darken that in. And I'm purposely not going to put anything onto the eye. The eyes are pretty much finished the way I want them to be. I can come down in the middle of that. And now we're starting to see some of that toning make sense. I'm going to grab a little bit of this iridescent purple. Now that we have a heat set. A 
And this stuff is soupy thin. This should be a decent color for what we're doing. And that's good. We're not getting a whole bunch of blow back. Just going to start adding our tones in here. Now with this moss green, I'm actually going to go in between some of the lines here, put in just a little bit more tonal shading around and under this eye, and then adding it in in between the purple. You'll notice that I have the tip off of the uh, airbrush at this point. And what we're sort of doing here is connect the dots. Not really but we're trying to add some depth and shading to what we already have. I'm also going to take this and shoot over the back of this just a little bit just to kind of get that shaded ridge. You guys can see how that kind of darkens that indentation here, which is what you want it to do. You want it to and enhance the shadow that would be there naturally. And then just a couple more little areas around the back here. Got some medium gray loaded into the cup. And now we're going to come back across the bait the other way and just add in a little bit of depth and shading across the top of the arm on both sides. And maybe just a little bit on top of the screen here. Okay. Now if you guys are looking on this picture, right in this little area here, right underneath the throat, there is just the tiniest bit of blue. And there's not a whole lot there. And we're going to say stay super light on this. But we are going to add it in. It's just a tiny little patch on either side, right at the base of the mouth and the throat. And 
Okay, we are going to use a stencil on this. I was debating on whether or not I wanted to put in, uh, and I did it on the base layers. I think what's really going to bring the colors out on this frog is to contrast what I have down with just some stark plain white on this little creature feature. So let's heat set this real quick. Loading in a few drops of white. So I want to be able to get just a little bit of detailing. I've kind of zoomed up on my picture, but if you'll notice right here underneath the eye, there's some plain white and right through here in front of the arm. So we're going to go ahead and load that on as well. I've got my pressure super low, right around eight. So I'm going to add this in. And go down to the mouth and then just a little bit right here under the arm. Do the same thing on this side. Just get right underneath that eye, go down to the mouth. And then underneath this arm. Let me see if there's any other prominent areas of white as I move around. Yeah, maybe just a little bit behind and on the stomach. Any on the back, maybe. Eh, it's mostly green and purples. We'll go right around the tip, though. It's not easy being precise. I will certainly tell you guys that. It takes a long time. And I still mess up. Goodness, I still mess up. But if you don't try and you don't practice, why even continue? Keep trying, keep practicing, you're going to get better. I can promise you that. Now, if we go back to here, you can see under the throat where the blue is. And that's how we'll tie in this white here because you got some bumps. And we're going to kind of depict the bumps and a white creature feature stencil. And this is the micro, the smallest that, that I know of that Brian puts out. There might be one smaller, but if there is, have not seen it. So that instantly gives you a good bit of detail. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Just lay that against that corner. You have to be precise with this too. This is not one of those patterns where you can just kind of goof around and come up with a jackpot. Because you still want areas that don't have the same amount of detail And then just a little bit here. And as we move, and I'm using this as a reference for a reason because there are certain areas which are much more prominent in the, uh, the bumps. So all through there. And another reason why we've got gray as a base now and not the white, because we want some sort of offset 
to where the well if you just put white on top of white with bumps that wouldn't work at all you'd never see it so that's why on your final layer you want just a little bit darker and now you're really starting to see the potential of what this can be and again you don't want to you don't want to go crazy on this bump and, and put too many in, but there are certain places where it kind of demands it. Get this on the other side. Here and back there. Now one of the other things I want to do before I put any kind of pearl additive on here is I want to redefine this eye just the edges of it and I can put some broken dotted lines on here and I can see that there's just a little bit of dots that go down the edges of this white area And we're going to do this, of course, on both sides. You guys see that? And the same thing, we want to come in and just redefine the edge. If I haven't mentioned it in a while, my apologies, this is a Rebel mold. It was a Rebel store-bought frog. And then we're just gonna kinda add that detailing back in. And this will get somewhat muted again when I do the um, the pearlescent additive. But we want to kind of make it look like it's supposed to be here. Just kind of add that in and go forward. And then just, just a couple where we were seeing the bands on the arms well the legs actually there's no arms on a frog just legs just add a couple of little extra details in to show where those leg bands are and what i mean by that is you can see the bands here here and we're just going to add a couple of finishing touches just edge in some more detail here kind of accent where those bands would be on the back leg even though this rebel mold does not per se have a back leg it does have some other cool stuff so you can pretend and then I'm just going to do half of a circle around this tympanic ear membrane if you want to get in the weeds biologically on it Almost there. I got the fin on my mouth. Sorry. 
got the pen in my mouth. Speaking of frogs, I can hear one outside. Pretty much defined here. I think we're coming down the home stretch. And you want to keep some of that shading in the background on the original layer because that's going to add a little bit of depth into this as well. If you put everything on the surface, then it looks extremely two-dimensional, which is not what you want. All right. Woo! Getting there. Now, the other thing that I want to do is clean up this eye. It kind of looked a little funky, but I really want that black pupil in the middle to shine. Uh, this is the tedious part. Some of you might just want to see the finished product. But I want to put that in. As a matter of fact, I'm going to sit this down. I've got this all pretzeled up again. That side's good. This side. Make sure you guys are in frame because I'm not sure. Okay. Now we'll get this. Uniball Vision Elite. This is the micro point. Here we are with my interpretation of the Cope's Gray Tree Frog, indigenous to the United States, breeds in ponds, shallow ones, and ones that have a few less fish in them when they can find it, but they can't always find it. I hope that I've been able to give you guys a good representation of what I wanted to do with this frog. Uh, the first part of the video probably looks like you have no idea how it's going to turn out, but remember that shading is important, and especially if you're doing finer detail stuff like this, you really want to get that background shading in and uh, make it look as nice as you can. I was able to edge that eye a little bit better. I don't want to go completely out of focus or get off track with this, but that's what we've got. Let's get this into some dip and finish up this video. Folks, fish heads, thank you guys so much for the view today. I really appreciate y'all watching. This has been my interpretation of the Cope's Gray Tree Frog. Uh, I hope I've been able to do it some justice and maybe teach you guys a few things this morning. I'm excited about how this is going to turn out. We've got our dip in, one final look of it coming out. And you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. We'll see you on the other side of things. All right, folks, the next thing coming out is going to be workshop updates, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much again. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.